Hello, um, welcome to our presentation on different moderation techniques. Uh, we are team 1106 from Carleton College and we're working on problem C. Okay, so we are interested in investigating the issue of information transfer and specifically if there are information on social media that are deemed inappropriate, uh, what would be some ways to moderate this information spread? And the two commonly seen ways nowadays would be censorship moderation and warning moderation. So basically the censorship moderation means that the platform manager could simply censor the information directly. And this might be a more effective method and may have a permanent effect. And the other method of warning moderation is to include a warning on the website that indicate the message is inappropriate. Today, we will focus on these two approaches and see how effective they are. And we will answer the questions, how population of different groups change with time. And from this population change, we can actually determine how effective are the different approaches to moderation. And additionally, we want to answer, um, do the different moderation methods impact the movement of people between the groups? And we are also interested about what happens when changes are made to the assumptions and how sensitive are our model to these assumptions. Uh, yeah, so there are four main assumptions we made in order to construct our model. And first, we defined there are three different groups of population, one of which is opinionless initially, and we denote it as P3. And we defined there are two other population groups with an initial opinion, and they could either represent completely different opinions or just different levels of agreement on the same opinion. And we can see this later in our model. Uh, we also assume that the three groups are representing all population on the social media, meaning that the total population of the three groups together shouldn't actually change. And in equation form, this will look like D, P1 plus, P2 plus, P3 over DT should be zero. Uh, we also assume that uh, constant parameters, and later we can see what the parameters actually represent. And for here, we just need to understand that we define the rate of transfer as parameter times the population of other groups we're interested in. And this should be clear for our model later. Yeah, so the first model we're going to talk about is the censorship moderation model. Um, so basically this model consists of three groups, P1, P2, having opp opposite uh, initial point of views. And P3 is the opinionless group. And we suspect that at first, the, the inappropriate information is more related to the point of view of P1. And when the information that's closer to P1 is censored, the direct result will be that with relevant issues, people can only see the point of view closer to P2 and the information concerning P1 would disappear on social media. And as a result, since people see less information both about P1 and the related issues in general, there will be more people from P1 inclining to move to P2 and P3, either changing the point of view or just remain neutral on the issue. And for people originally from P2, although their initial point of view is very different from P1, we actually su suspect that as information about P1 is censored, um, they see less information about the issue in general as well. And since the topic and discussion about the issue is less and less, people from P2 will also uh, less likely to care about the issue and thus moving to P3. So both groups have a tendency to move to P3 as less and less information uh, can be seen on social media. Uh, and there are some unique points about the censorship model that we want to discuss that makes it very different from the warning model. So we suspect that since information inclined to one side is seized directly, there could be a more extreme of either population and the change may be more obvious and severe. So we put no limit, either upper limit or lower limit on the number of people that could be reached in each group. And in the contrast for the warning model, as you can see later, we actually put a limiting factor on the population of P1. We are also quite certain that since the people uh, lose some space to discuss and exchange their opinions because P1 related information are censored, the opinionless group will be more important because when P P1 and P2 group uh, are less likely to communicate and convince each other, then P3 will play a major role.
Yeah, so here are some results for our modeling. And this first one is about sensitivity to initial population with extreme group switching. And here we make three parameters, C1, C2, and C3, all having the same values. We can see in this case, the initial population doesn't have a strong effect on the long-term behavior. And uh, both groups of P1 and P2 will tend to move to P3 as what, expect, or what we expect just now. And the P1 and P2 group will tend to vanish in the long-term. So everyone will roughly hold a roughly like neutral opinion. And uh, so the population is worth noticing that population of P1 is vanishing more quickly than P2 as well. And this also makes sense because the P1 related opinions are censored directly. Yeah, in, in this graph, it, we explore the sensitivity to initial population for cyclic preferences. And in um, so basically, we are choosing C1, C2, C3 amount to fixing a characteristic time for problem. And in this case of cyclic change, there's we can observe a kind of oscill oscillation in the graph. And but in each cycle, P3 still seem to overwing like win over P1 and P2, and is P3 is showing the same maximum position by the end, just the same as the last graph when the parameters are hot constant. And the one thing worth noticing is that there, um, the, the, the change in this case for the uh, censorship model is very obvious. Like the peak is very steep and the period is roughly small. Uh, and this is very different from what we will see for the warning model later. And um, the third graph here is about the sensitivity to group switching parameters. And basically we change the value of C in a range from zero to 0 0.002. And we obtain this graph and we can see that our model is relatively stable against the small fluctuations with initial parameters. So our model is quite stable with both the initial population and the parameters for our censorship models. And so the second um, moderation technique that we investigated was warning moderation. And um, we used a very similar model to censorship, um, except we had this additional factor on uh, P1 transitions from, so like P1 to P3 or P1 to P2, um, that is like a factor of one minus P1 over hundred. And this is to keep um, the population of P1 from uh, sort of exploding or being so extreme. Um, and uh, if we uh, take, um, C1 and C2 to be positive. Uh, so this is like some moderation. Of, so this is some moderation on uh, population one, population two, that they have such extreme opinions that they need to be moderated uh, with warnings so that they would join P3. We said that that is uh, what happens. Um, so over time, uh, folks in populations one and populations two with extreme opinions reevaluate their opinions due to seeing these warnings and join population three. And um, if, on the other hand, um, populations one and populations two are like different uh, gradations of extreme, uh, of the same extreme idea, then um, depending, then, then there could be switching between population one and population two, uh, depending on uh, which group sees the other uh, group's ideas more um, appealing, even though there's warning going on, uh, warnings going on. And then, but because of the warnings, eventually they reevaluate their opinions and join population three. And we see that uh, with, on in the graph on the right, when um, there's incentive for population two to join population uh, one, the um, population of population one uh, falls off more slowly. And this could be um, some sort of indication that they uh, hold to their ideas um, more, uh, more tightly. And um, in addition, if we uh, change the parameters slightly, uh, we see that the same general characteristic of the unopinion, uh, of the group without opinions um, having the most population over time um, stays the same. So right, um, population three over time is eventually the entire population. And um, if we um, adjust the uh, incentives so that um, population two has the most extreme ideas in our, uh, their are warnings so that they choose to go to the opinionless group P3, but P1 has ideas that are um, intriguing to, element, uh, to folks in population um, three, then we see sort of this like um, fluctuation uh, if population one is not warned. Um, and yes. And a general conclusions from warning moderation is that similarly to censorship, um, the population uh, tends to join the unwarned group or groups. And this is stable under initial population fluctuations and under um, fluctuations in the parameters. 
And uh, in the future, we could make um, larger groups to uh, capture different gradations of opinions um, or break up opinionated groups into subgroups. We could also make the parameters time dependent and we could also account for folks entering and leaving the system. Um, thank you for uh, listening to our presentation and here's a bibliography.